Hey guys, it's Ricky Cadden here from Real Life Trading Australia. I'm here with your boy Jeremy Alexander Newsom behind the camera there. And uh, we're here at Tangaluma Morton Island. And we've spent an amazing weekend here for the last two days. Check out this amazing beach and uh, absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to move here one day, but uh, for now, here's a stock review just for you. Traders from around the world, what's going on? It's Ricky Cadden from Real Life Trading Australia. I hope you guys have been absolutely amazing. Jeremy and I have been away for the last week. Uh, we have been traveling through Morton Island and Byron Bay. Uh, it has been absolutely amazing. I feel super humbled and uh, very blessed to have him here in Australia. Um, but today we're going to do another special review for you guys. I'm going to tackle the Aussie markets and then he will be right after me to talk about the US market. So I'll dive in and take a look at the all odds. So the all odds not doing a great deal here, guys. We still haven't broke out of this particular uh, ascending wedge here. I do expect us to go higher. Um, if we do pull back, it most likely will only come back down to the 100 simple moving average. Uh, but from there, I would expect us to bounce and slowly move higher. Let's take a look at JBH which is JB Hi-Fi, my absolute favorite, favorite uh, company to shop at. We did get a retest gap just at the end of October here, and we have not filled that gap currently. So what I do expect to happen here, guys, is I do expect us to slowly come down. We did create a, a lower high. Most likely, we'll come down, close this gap, consolidate a little longer, allow this 100 simple moving average to come in, and then slowly look to bounce. So JB Hi-Fi, if you were in bullish from way back here when I spoke about it back in July and August, uh, then well done to you guys. Uh, I hope you guys are locking in those profits. Let's take a look at A2 Milk Company. Now this one's really quite interesting guys, um, we haven't looked at this for a while simply because it's been an all time high and uh, it has had a glorious pullback. As you can see from the highs we've pulled back just about 35% and what's interesting is on the weekly chart we have come straight down to the 100 simple moving average on a weekly chart. I don't expect us to just launch on out of here. I do expect us probably to consolidate a little bit longer. But take a look at the daily chart, guys. We are getting increasing volume. We're getting some beautiful, beautiful bullish candles here. Nice little morning star reversal patterns. And most likely, it looks like it will slowly trade higher. So keep A2 Milk Company on your list. Let's take a look at Afterpay, ticket symbol APT, and we did get that beautiful bounce with a Morningstar reversal off the 200. We have had a couple of retest gaps these last two days, so I do expect these to fill as well. So an entry here at around 27.36 with a stop below the 200 would be a very good play to kind of just wait for that nice little dip buying opportunity uh, to go back in long and let's take a look at the bank CBA So Commonwealth Bank is right now is Just chopping around sideways guys. I have spoken about this before if you were looking to sell some options You can look to sell some options probably around 82 to 84 uh, on, on longer term positions. Uh, if you did get to catch this bounce, well done to you guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. Um, but from here, guys, I still do expect CBA to just chop around. So if you are looking to get in, just buy low and sell high on this one. Let's take a look at some commodities. Take a look at crude. Crude is just absolutely struggling to get above this 200 on the daily. Uh, you can see it is just an absolute massive brick wall. Um, if we do, however, break out of this, uh, break above this 200, I do expect us probably to go to about 59.96, um, and 59.90 between 59 and 50 and 60 dollars is most likely where the next set of resistance is going to be. So keep your eyes peeled on that one. Take a look at gold. Now gold obviously did pull back after the news about the the non-trade deal that's happening with the U.S. and China. Um, but interestingly enough, guys, we are pausing here at around 14.50. So keep your eyes open here for a 
short term long position um, it's not we have had a very very large move um, this year already on gold so I don't expect us to just launch on out of here there will be a lot of consolidation here and last but not least oops last but not least we'll take a look at the Aussie dollar and funnily enough we are rejecting the 200 simple moving average and slowly but surely heading lower don't know who could have picked that guys we have not been speaking about this for the last six months um but anyway guys aussie dollar moving moving lower that's enough for me i'll hand this over to jeremy and he will fill you guys in on what's going on with the us all right rich thanks so much for that handover i appreciate it immensely ready to absolutely rock let me do this i'm gonna share with you all some trades that i just recently got into some swing trades, so that way you'll kind of know a little bit about what's going on. Love and Facebook, I talked about this one and uh, was mentioning it really after this gap. So this was a gap and go, and it didn't go, <laughs> at least not higher. Uh, traded down, actually filled the gap, and then got that really nice hammer, and the 100 sim symbol is hanging out here. Facebook has literally zero China exposure. So my thought on this one is buy stock and sell $200 covered calls. And until you get called away, uh, that particular cover call expires this Friday and I'm hoping it expires worthless, although it might not after this really nice morning star reversal. So if the $200 expires worthless, fantastic. And if again, it doesn't, let's do it again. So realistically, Facebook, pretty simple, buy low, sell high and snag some covered calls. I am pretty bullish on JD.com going into earnings. I do have some bullish positions on this one, some shares and some covered calls on JD. Those calls are, uh, the, they're sold calls. So I am capping some of my gains on some of these positions on JD up around 36, but that really would not be a bad move. $3 per share. Love the breakout on JD, love the gap, love the candles, love the volume, all about it. And if we retrace and pull back and dip, I'm even more bullish realistically on the longer term scale. So we'll see what happens on JD, but that's just kind of my plan at the precise moment in time. Uh, did open a new order on Pinterest, P-I-N-S, down here on the daily time frame. You can see that you had a really strong retest gap action. Black candle gapping down. We retest it. We trade back up, and we're starting to get a little bit of a pop potentially. So pretty simple on Pinterest, just snagging some shares down here on uh, kind of like an hourly time frame. So I'll turn the extended hours off, just to make it nice and clear. And here is the hourly chart. So buying off of this low right here and selling some $22 covered calls expiring in the next few days or weeks. Uh, that's pretty much it on Pinterest. And that is the November challenge, by the way, is to do a covered call and get exercised profitably in November. And if you can't get exercised profitably, uh, that's okay. Just don't get exercise, take the premium and do some more in December. Anyway, that's always the goal is to make money, right? Pinterest, buy low, sell high, playing that one, hoping for some gap fills. And then Alibaba, watching Baba closely because they had a ridiculous singles day. So keeping a really, really close eye on Baba to go higher, especially with this hammer candle and uh, some of these moving averages. Moving averages look pretty good. So good retest, good trend, Baba looking pretty strong. And last but not least for me is going to be NVIDIA, NVDA. A lot of people want to know how I'm playing this one over earnings. And realistically, I suggest going longer term call option debit spread is probably the best way to play it. Buy some out of the money calls, sell some really, really far out of the money calls, maybe for June or something so that if it gaps up, Right, we gap up a little bit. If we gap up on NVIDIA, we'll probably go a little bit higher, trade down, and then eventually bounce. So that would give you the opportunity to buy that call option back. And of course, NVIDIA might not gap at all, or it might gap down, which is obviously totally reasonable for it to do. If it gaps down on NVIDIA, I would be a buyer. I'd be bullish trying to track down what type of position I could buy around 187. That's pretty much it, realistically. Like if it gaps down, I'd be a dip buying opportunity machine. Uh, and if it gaps up, I love NVIDIA long. Big, big fan. I'm in a bullish position on it right now and kind of excited to see what happens on it. So if it does gap up, all about it, I will expect a, a nice little bullish pop. Again, some type of retest and then most likely 
a continuation higher on NVDA. Folks from around the world, thank you so much for tuning in to this stock review. We will be doing another one later in the week, and I will be back in Nashville on Sunday night. Sunday night, Ashley and I will uh, get prepared for the week ahead. Monday, we'll be back in action in the trading rooms and just ready to rock and roll. So, folks from around the world, thanks so much for tuning in. You are amazing. And until next time, love life, live life, and trade it. Bye.